here we go. You obviously need to be seeing this problem here. So I need everybody looking up here. So first of all, there's a couple different things that people have tried in the past. First of all, I had some people first hour try factoring this and it didn't factor. Well, I wouldn't have even tried factoring. What do you notice about this quadratic? It's missing what? It's missing BX, good. So how do we solve those? Well, we learned an e the easiest method for quadratics of this form are to isolate X squared completely. So we're gonna get it all by itself. So what am I gonna do? Add four to both sides of the equation. So you have 4x squared is equal to negative 64. If any of you are able to get to here, then what will we do? Divide. We must isolate x squared completely, divide both sides by 4, you're right. So we have x squared is equal to negative 16. Some of you are even able to get that far. So then from there, we take the square root, square root of both sides of the equation. So my root cancels out with power. X is equal to, we can't forget the plus and minus, right? So then the square root of negative 16 is not negative four. Incorrect. Remember, we can rewrite this as 16 times negative one. What's the square root of 16? Four, what's the square root of negative one? I, so we have plus or minus four I. So X is equal to positive four I. X is equal to negative. Why is it not 4 plus i? Because it's plus or minus that answer. So 4 plus i is a completely different answer. Can I write my name on that one? Moving on. So this is everything we've learned with the quadratic so far. So we can't forget everything we've learned so far. So well, first of all, I guess I should ask any questions. Okay. So we're good. So let's get to what we're doing today. Once again, we've learned tons about a quadratic we can't forget. So just look with me. We've learned the standard form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are the coefficients in front of the variables. a is always in front of x squared, b is in front of x, and c is our constant coefficient. Then we learned how to find the axis of symmetry. Remember, the axis of symmetry is where we can fold our parabola and it's symmetric around that line. This is the formula for it. x is equal to the opposite of b over 2a. You need to have that memorized. Then from there, our vertex. We can find our vertex by plugging that x value into our function and finding our y value. And our y-intercept is always when x is equal to 0, so we can plug in 0 into our quadratic. So isn't 0 squared always going to be 0? So 0 times a is going to be 0. b times x, if x is 0, so b times 0 is 0. So isn't our y-intercept always going to be c? Yes. Okay. As long as it's in standard form. And then we have learned the past two days how to find some zeros. And we've learned these two types of how to find zeros of these two types. So that's when it's missing the x. And then we learned yesterday how to solve and find those zeros by factoring. So we've been able to find all these things on our quadratic. So once again, let's solve these two quadratics. Now once again, look at this first example. You don't need to take notes or anything. Just look if you'd like. Negative 2x squared minus 18 is equal to 0. What's the first thing you notice? You've got to be able to notice. Good. It's missing bx. So let's use the method of isolating x squared. So I'm going to add 18 to both sides. Negative 2x squared is equal to 18. Then I'm going to divide by negative 2. So we have x, is e x squared is equal to, and then we take the square root of both sides of the equation. So we get x is equal to plus and minus what? So three, 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 I. three I, right? The square root of nine is three, square root of negative one's I. Am I okay to not write that out? Skipping now a little bit of steps. So we have two answers there, right? We better have two. We better have two. Quadratics always have two solutions. So looking at this one, are we missing the X? Oh. No, so we can't use that method. So we're gonna try another method. The only thing we've learned how to do so far is factoring. So we're going to go ahead and say, okay, we've got to first make sure it's set equal to zero, and this quadratic is, so we can go ahead and say, is there anything in all three terms that factor out right here right now? No. Nope. So we can go ahead and say, okay, then we know we need to know A, B, and C. So A is equal to 1, B is equal to negative 6, C is equal to negative 7. We'll multiply it to be A times C and adds up to be B. So A times C will multiply it to be negative 7 and adds up to be negative 6. 
So this is not 1 times 7. Yep. Now, our negative has to be correctly here, or else your whole answer is wrong. So which one's negative? 7, because positive 1 times negative 7 is negative 7, and then 1 plus negative 7 is negative 6. Now, once again, there are quadratics, and people, you've got to understand this, that it will work over here, but the signs don't match up over here. So you've got to watch carefully. It's got to work in both cases. Does that make sense? So it might work if you put a negative with one or the other, but if the negatives don't match up over here with this sign, you, you can't use those factors. Does that make sense? Okay. So then we can quick factor this. I'm going to just long factor this one really quick. So drop and break. So we have x squared, drop down negative 7, and then we break down our middle term. So we're rewriting it as those two factors. So we're going to have positive 1x and minus 7x. Group the first two terms, group the last two terms, factor out of each group what's in common. There's an x in common. So then go back through, divide each term by what you factored out. So left is x plus 1. In this group, we're factoring out a negative 7. Because of the negative in front, we always factor out a negative. Left is x plus 1, right? Negative 7 divided by negative 7 is positive 1. Our safe haven good. we factor it out. x plus 1, so it divides out, leaving us with x minus 7. Then from there, we can set our factors equal to 0 and solve. Now, can anyone remember what the rule is that allows us to break them apart? Oh, zero, zero, zero property. Yes. Zero property. Zero product property. Good job, you two. Way to go. So the zero product property rule says if you have two things being multiplied, the whole thing's equal to zero, you can set them apart and set them individually equal to zero. So I'm going to say x plus 1 is equal to zero, but also x minus 7 is also equal to zero. Now let's solve for x in each case. Subtract 1. So x is equal to negative 1. There's one of our answers. Add 7. x is equal to 7. There's our other answer. Are we all comfortable with that? I long factor just for practice, because remember, if A is not positive 1, you have to long factor. Okay, let's do some problems off the worksheet. So let's go to number 4 on the worksheet from yesterday. I'll give you a second to get it out. Read the instructions so that you're not just copying what I'm doing, but you're actually reading, because you have to know what it's asking you to do. So it says, use the zero product property to solve each equation. So let's look at number 4. Looking at number 4, we're asked to use the zero product property. So the first thing we do is factor it. Well, look at it. Isn't it factored? Yeah. yeah. So would it be pointless to multiply it back out? Yeah. Yeah, guys, okay. if I multiply it out, then I have to refactor it to solve it, right? And guess what? You're going to end up back here. So don't multiply it out and refactor it. You're just going to end up back to where you started. So everybody, I'm going to ask you one thing. This is important. In this factor, is it a linear factor? No. Yes. Isn't this degree 1 on T? Oh, yeah. So that's a linear factor. Isn't this a linear factor? It's degree 1 on T. So these are linear factors. So we're going to set our linear factors each equal to 0. Our zero product property rule says we can do that. So I'm going to say set 8T minus 7 equal to 0, and I'm going to set 3T plus 5 equal to 0, and I'm going to solve for T algebraically piece by piece. So I'm going to add 7. So I have 8t is equal to 7, divide by 8. So my one of my answers is t is equal to 7 over 8. Now we're going to subtract 5. So we have 3t is equal to negative 5, divide by 3. So we get t is equal to negative 5 thirds. Now remember, these are where it's crossing. We solved it. These are where it's crossing the x-axis. These are the x-intercepts. These are the zeros. These are the roots. Questions on that one? So pretty easy. Let's look at number 20. If you read the instructions, which we need to read them, it says, use the zero product property to solve each equation, and it says, write your solutions, whatever that means, as a roster, write your solutions as a set in roster form. Just write your answers how we've been writing them. So, negative, so number 20, is it factor for us? Yes, no. Nope. No. So we've got to say, okay, it's a quadratic to find zeros. We've got to factor it. So once again, we're doing what multiplies to be negative 7 and adds up to be negative 6. 1 times 7, and the negative is with the 7. This is just like the problem we just did, right? But I'm not going to long factor. I'm going to quick factor it because my a value is positive 1. 
So we know that it's going to factor to be a binomial being multiplied. It's an x, so I put an x in front. Then you insert, because we can quick factor those two things. This is positive 1, so I put plus 1 for positive 1. This is negative 7, so I put in minus 7. So it was equal to 0 up here, it's still equal to 0. Our zero product property rule says we can set each of those equal to 0 and solve. So we're going to get x is equal to negative 1, x is equal to 7. So there's our two solutions. Does everybody see how to do those? So right now, this is what I want you working on. 19 through 21, I'm sorry, 1 through 6, 19 through 21. I'm going to give you around 10 minutes, and then I'm going to move on. Back. 1 through 6, 19 through 21. One through problem number 22 together. So I'm going to kind of read it slow. Make sure you're paying attention to what I'm saying and little details here. So it says, if you read number 22, it says, the volume of a sandbox shaped like a rectangular prism is 48 feet. So once again, rectangular prism. Rectangle, does everybody see how this is a rectangle? on the ground here. And a prism means 3D object. So we have a rectangular 3D object and it says the volume is 48 feet cubed. The feet cubed part's just the measurement. So our volume, I'm going to write it down, is 48 feet cubed. But I'm just going to write 48 feet, yeah, cubed, okay, whatever. Now it says the height of the sandbox is 2 feet, the width is W feet, and the length is W plus 2 feet. It says, use the formula volume is equal to length times width times height to find the value of W. So I drew a picture. Pictures are always helpful. So I draw a picture here. So this is my height, right, of my box. Yes. So it says the height of the sandbox is 2 feet. So I'm going to write that in. So that height is 2. It says the width is W in feet. So right here is the width. Right. So I put in a W. Now, what if I would have said the length is 2 more than the width? W, w plus 2. Do you see how it's just, I'm wording it differently. So it gives us the width is W plus 2, we just simply put in W plus 2. But do you understand how I just said, and the length is 2 feet larger than the width when we just do W plus 2? Okay. Um, wait. I was just rewording it to get us thinking differently. Okay. So do you understand how the width is 2 longer than the width? Yeah. The length is. Okay. So now we can go ahead and plug it in. We're given the formula of volume is equal to length times the width times the height. Let's put in everything we know. Our volume is 48. I'm going to leave the feet cubes off. I'll put it on my final answer. So 48 is equal to the length, which is W plus 2, right? Now you have to, everybody listen, you have to use parentheses when multiplying things. So I need to use parentheses. It's the length, which is W plus 2 in parentheses, times the width. So times the width times the height, which is 2. Is everybody comfortable up to here? Questions up to here? So now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this through. So there's many different ways we can do this. So I'm going to distribute. Isn't W multiplied to all that stuff? Well, that's why we have to put it in parentheses. So we have W times W. W times 2 plus 2W and it's all that stuff being multiplied by 2. So i got to put that in parentheses multiplied by 2. So now I'm going to distribute 2 through. So we're going to have 4W squared plus 4W. That's equal to 48. So now 2W squared not 48. 2W squared. Thank you. Two W squared plus four W. Good fix. So then from there, look at it. If we want to solve for W, that is quadratic, right? Bearing Brexton, you're gonna be lost. Watch. So once again, it's quadratic. Are we missing the middle value? Yep. Nope, we're not. It's right there. So we can't solve this by isolating W squared. We have to solve this by a different method. So let's solve by factoring. First rule in factoring, make sure your equation is set equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 48 from both sides. Now over here on the left, I have zero is equal to 2w squared plus 4w minus 48. 
But no, from here, if it bothers you too much to have a delta in the front, I can say, okay, I'm going to write this as equal to zero over here. Same thing. So then we're going to say, okay, we know that our A value is 2, my B value is 4, my C value is negative 48. So I'm going to do what multiplies to be A times C. So we're looking for what multiplies to be A times C, negative 96, 2 times negative 48 is negative 96, adds up to be B, B is 4. So I started testing factors in my calculator. I did 96 divided by 2, 96 divided by 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I got to 8. And 8 times 12, couldn't that add up to be 4? Yes. Okay, yes. which one's the negative? 8. 8. So check it again, negative 8 plus 12. Yep, works in both cases. We cannot quick factor, so let's quickly drop and break. <laughs> so we drop and break. We drop down our n terms, 2w squared. We drop down our n terms exactly like they are. Then we're breaking down our middle term, rewriting it as these two factors, but with a w. So I have minus 8w, order doesn't matter, plus 12w. So parentheses around the first two, around the second two, and factor each group. The greatest thing in common here is 2w. Divide each thing by what you factored out. So that leaves me with W minus 4. In common here is a 12. So we're going to factor out a positive 12. And then left is W minus 4. Our safe haven is good. We pull it out. So W minus 4. And then it divided out when we factored it out, leaving us with 2w plus 12. We factored this, and now we set it equal to 0, and the zero product property rule allows us to split it up. So I have w minus 4 is equal to 0. I have 2w plus 12 equal to 0. Solve for w. Add 4. So we get w is equal to 4. We subtract 12. 2w is equal to negative 12, divide by 2. w is equal to negative 6. So our width is equal to 4 and negative 6. For this problem, would it make sense to have a negative 6 width? No. No. So we throw the answer out. We're not going to use that answer. We're only using the answer that makes sense. So positive 4. So our width, we're going to answer the question. It says find the value of w. Our width was 4. But what if I extended that and said, well, then what's the, what's the dimensions of the box? 6. 4, this is 4 plus 2, so this is 6, and then we already knew this one. Does that make sense, everybody, on how to do this? Yes. We all okay with how to set up a story problem? Yes. Draw a picture, length times width, don't forget parentheses, double distribute, whatnot. All right. Do these problems. So this is required of everybody. 22 through 24, 27, 29. Advanced learners, you should try these problems. <laughs> Here's the formula for area. I mean, I know it's a shocker, but we do have some advanced learners in here. And you know who you are, and I do expect you to try those once you've finished what's required. Ready, set, go. 